Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We want to welcome you all to this amazing historical occasion that is being hosted and presented by our awesome Congresswoman Barbara Lee and our amazing speaker Nancy Pelosi. And I want to introduce to you to your amazing MC, Director Latifa Simon. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. What I will say is life is better when you take public transportation. <laughs> I didn't take public transportation today, and I'm late to Mayor Brown. <laughs> I will say that I um, did something, I took a, what, what we call a TNC, I took a lift. <laughs> Take public transportation. <laughs> public transportation, no matter what, it will be on time for the most part, especially because of our great speaker, Nancy Pelosi, has brought over $2 billion to public transportation in the Bay Area just two weeks ago. Our amazing Congresswoman Barbara Lee just brought home $257 million for Bay Area Rapid Transit. And, and as of last night, as of last night, I was reinstated to the BART Board of Directors. Thanks to much of your advocacy. So I stand here, thank goodness, as an elected member of, in, in the great tradition of Mayor Willie Brown in the neighborhood that I was born in. Now we have a number of electeds here today. Um, the one that I walked in with is the amazing Malia Cohen. We have Mayor Brown here. We have the wonderful, wonderful, God-fearing moral compass of our community, Reverend Amos Brown. And I would love for you. For those of you all who didn't have the opportunity to be raised in this community, every birth, every home going, our elder saw that we were okay. This library, and I just learned recently, I'm gonna invite you to the stage, but the Ethiopian and Eritrean community during times of war, he shepherded to ensure literally hundreds of folks had refuge of African descent in the Western edition. The honorable and amazing faith leader never lets us down. He's here today and he's going to give us some words. And so I would like to invite you, sir, to the stage. It's a little bit too quiet. Dr. Amos Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Madam Speaker, my dear and our illustrious Congresswoman Barbara Lee, honored guest, Mr. Mayor, all your other dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. I am incredibly honored during this last week of International Women's Observance, but I'm also, Mr. Mayor, challenged in my conscience and my soul. Because though we rightly so honor this iconic Shiro, mm -hmm. as we say thanks to all the hands 
and the minds who brought the past, her image being engraved. But don't shout too high, though we're grateful for actually on this 25 cents coin, there should be more. During the Obama administration, you well know that there was an idea advanced that one Harriet Tubman's image should be on that $20 bill, replacing the image of that evil demagogue man from Tennessee named Jackson. So today, I'm not going to give a huge prayer, <laughs> but be true to my namesake, the prophet Amos. I'm going to prophesy. Prophesy that we take the 25 cent coin but we not be satisfied until that image of Jackson's is removed from that $20 bill and Harriet Tubman joins with Sister Maya and all those sainted, struggling, sacrificing heroes and sheroes of old who were in the struggle. For we deserve our full humanity Amen. being celebrated and acknowledged. And I do think that $20 is more than a 25 cents coin. Amen. Oh God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those who have assembled. May we all push toward that day when our value, when our dignity, and when our being will be honored with equal value of all of your children in this crusted earth. Amen. Amen. Gentlemen, there are heroes among us. There are heroes among us. And thank you so much, Reverend Dr. Brown. When you think of history, history is our present. And I just want to remind us today, the, it is Women's History Month. And there are deep folks, if you look to your right, your left, your front, to your back, there are folks who have paved the way for the self-determination and freedom that we all have. Nothing was given. Every single freedom that we have was fought for. As we think about Harriet Tubman, and before our spoken word artist comes on to the, the, the stage, I want us, if you haven't studied, if you had to have the opportunity to understand the critical value that Harriet Tugman gives to all of us, this was a woman who refused who refused to let children waller in slavery. And when young people got to the North, she went back. And she went back. And she went back, and her vigor and her fever refused to ensure or make sure that young people who were afraid in those dark woods, mm -hmm. she made them kept going mm -hmm. through swamps, mm -hmm. through the, the fear of dogs and guns and enslavers. And that's what we see from the women right behind us and the women right in front of me women who've refused, women who've refused in the face of white supremacy, in the face of racism, to stop. This is what today is about. Because of this beautiful program, I'll continue, but we have an amazing spoken word artist, and I want to invite her to the stage in fear that I will butcher her beautiful, God-given, indigenous name. I'm going to invite her up to the stage and have her 
introduce herself, and I want to thank you so much for your gift. Please. Can I introduce you? When I was asked to uh, give spoken word, um, What's your name? my name is Yejide. Yejide uh, is of Nigerian origin. Um, I'm actually overwhelmed to be in the presence of the people that I'm in, so I'm, bear with me a little bit. Um, so I'm actually not going to do an original piece today. I'm going to do Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Um, my aunt introduced us to poetry when we were very young, and the first poem I ever heard was Woman's Work. Uh, by Maya Angelou. And then she said we had to take the poem and write a poem with the same name. The only thing I remember is I, the last part said, um, oh, how I don't long for to be a working woman. Oh, no, not today. <laughs> so um, this is Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute to suit fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride in my step, and the curl of my lips. I am a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, the fellows stand up or fall on their knees. They swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes. It is the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, and the joy in my feet. I am a woman, ha, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun in my smile, the rod of my breast, and the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand why my head is not bowed. I don't have to shout or jump, or I don't have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, you ought, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels. I'm wearing flats, but you can hear it. <laughs> the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, and the need for my care, for our care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Thank you, Father. <laughs> why we're here to celebrate Maya. We felt Maya, didn't we? I wanted to be clear that Maya Angelou lived in this neighborhood. And she played at Mayor Willie Brown's Good Friends Club, who happened to be my grandfather, Bunny Simon. She did residencies at Bunny Simon's Club for many years. She went to George Washington High School prior. And as a young teen mother, George Washington High School kicked her out because she was pregnant with her son. God rest his soul and God rest hers. But she taught young mothers like me, there is no ways tired. That's right. And as today we continue to celebrate her with another woman who was also a young mother, who nothing was given to her. She fought not only for her son, but for all of us. Many of you will remember, it, it feels like it was too Two decades ago, when she stood on the floor of the congressional space in the highest place in the land and made sure that young black girls knew that we had someone who spoke for us. When this country decided to spend billions of dollars to murder other children, Congresswoman Barbara Lee continues to be our moral compass. Yeah. And she has fought day and night tirelessly, not only to bring home money to California, but to show little girls all over the world 
that we can be in faces and places of power and do the right thing and never concede. Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Good morning. First, thank you so much for being here, and I want to thank our speaker for giving me a visa to come to <laughs> the city of St. Francis. And let me just first uh, say, where, where's Latifa? Uh, where are you? But listen, I just have to first say to you that you exemplify, you exemplify how women, of, women, women of color, black women, know what being persistent means. <laughs> And knowing as our nominee for the highest court of the land said, you know what perseverance is. Mm -hmm. And with persistence and perseverance, here you are. So yeah. give a round of applause. Yeah. But I'm so happy and blessed to be here with so many phenomenal women. And I'd like to, um, of course, thank our great speaker, and she is the greatest speaker of all times, uh, who I honor during Women's History Month. So I get to work with her each and every day. I was sworn in by Newt Gingrich, okay? <laughs> and I worked for Ryan Dellums for 11 years. I know how great or not speakers are. <laughs> this is the greatest speaker of all time, and a woman, and that's something else. So thank you so much, uh, Speaker Pelosi, for, for allowing us to do this event in, in your great district, uh, in the neighborhood of Dr. Maya Angelou. Also to Rosie Reyes, who's the former United States Treasurer under President Obama. And let me just say something about Rosie very quickly. We began working on this legislation, Lord have mercy, in 2017 wow. in my office. Rosie came in there and she said, look, we have got to do something. There are no women on our coins. And yes, Pastor Brown, we're going to get that $20 bill with Harriet. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, Rosie and I worked on this, and she, she was persistent, and she persevered. And Speaker Pelosi, we had to amend this bill and we had to rewrite the bill probably seven or eight times. Then we had to find a Republican co-sponsor of the bill in the House. Then we had to find first a, a senator who would see this as important. That was an uphill battle. And then we had to find a Republican senator who saw the importance of this. <laughs> you know what all that... Took. Yeah. It took us <laughs> seven years. Mm -hmm. But again, persistence and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rosie, very much. <laughs> and to uh, Stephanie Johnson, Dr. Angelo's daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. and all of her family members for joining us today. I, I just have to say one thing, because Guy, we had a conversation. Guy was involved in this process, Maya's son, uh, throughout the seven years. And especially once the legislation was signed and the men set up the commission and the, the selection process. But um, we missed Guy today. We talked about this event. I mean, this was like, what, a month ago, a month and a half ago? And he was so joyous about the event. He was so happy about the coin. And he was looking forward to today. And, and so when, when I came here, I said, Stephanie, uh, our condolences still go out to you. And I love. And um, we miss God. I know it's difficult during this time for you especially. But you, you showed up on behalf of yourself, on behalf of your husband, and on behalf of your beautiful mother-in-law. So thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, certainly my friend, our friend, former mayor and speaker Willie Brown, in the absence of our female mayor of the city of San Francisco, Mayor London Breed, who is not in town, Mayor Willie Brown is here. 
I know you like speaking on behalf of a woman who's the mayor of this great city, Mayor Brown. <laughs> so let me just say a couple of things about the COIN program. From um, 2007 to 2000, and uh, well, we have five quarters now that are going to be circulated. And these quarters, uh, hopefully, you will have, uh, well, we'll have one for you today. But they're going to be five quarters that have been already put forth by the Mint. Of course, Dr. Maya Angelou. And then we have uh, Sally Ride, who I think has come out already this month. And um, we have the first, um, Ms. Wong, the first actress, AAPI actress in Hollywood. We have the, a coin um, who puts forth the life and legacy and symbolism of the first woman Latina superintendent of public schools in um, New Mexico, also a leader in the voting rights effort. She was an unbelievable woman. And then we have a coin that will be uh, by the head, former head of the Cherokee Nation whose life and legacy everyone needs to get to know and learn because all of these women not only are on the coins for the first time, but it's their stories and, the sim and though symbolic, it's the stories in their lives and how they were able to do what they did and our young people know, need to know who they are. They need to know who they are, in, especially uh, when they, all they know and see on our coins are Washington, Lincoln, and Franklin. Uh, they should know just about, as much about Shirley Chisholm and Fannie Lou Hamer, mm -hmm. Sylvia Rivera, mm -hmm. uh, Patsy Mink, mm -hmm. as they do about all of the guys that are on our currency. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> this, this is important. And yes, symbolism is important, but it's just one of the many efforts to adequately acknowledge and respect women's contributions. There's so much work to do though, like closing the gender pay gap, protecting the right to comprehensive reproductive health care, securing paid family medical leave, child care, and so much more. And so this is just the beginning. Women's history is our history. And so I hope that these coins will motivate people to learn more about the major contributions of these women in history, hear the stories of their lives, and inspire the next generation of leaders. So now let me just bring forward your representative and my speaker, <laughs> who I just have to say, this would never have happened had we not had a speaker, Nancy Pelosi, as the speaker of the house, because she's the one who calls the shots on everything, and, the, and, and legislation is hard to pass, but she helped us every step of the way to do this, so thank you, Steve Pelosi. Good morning, everyone. Amos, thank you for your inspirational prayer this morning. I know you have to go, but I just want you to know that I carry in my heart the words that you have said when we were recently together about gun violence and our young people, thank you for that and for this and for everything. Thank you, Amos Brown, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I want to associate myself, of course, with the remarks of others who have gone before to talk about the importance of women on the coins. But first, I want to say how happy I am to be in this library. My first official assignment a long time ago my children were very little crawling all over the place and I was appointed to the library commission and, and one of the things that we did because we were very we were volunteers and then they elevated me as a volunteer to be on the commission and uh, one of the things we did when I became a member of the library commission was to say we're going to have our commission meetings in the neighborhood library so we can really bring it to the people and hear what they have to say and again also to recognize the importance not only of central library which is important but our libraries and this is lovely and it's a joy to be here the uh, other point I want to make is that today as we gather the uh, Senate is preparing to confirm the first yeah, woman yeah. justice of the African American woman justice of the Supreme 
her dignity, her brilliance, her capability, her persistence, as Barbara has said, and, and again, not only as Barbara, but as Latifa has said, have been really so, so magnificent for the country to behold. It's long overdue, it's about time, and it, pretty soon it will happen and we'll all be proud. And just another recognition of the role of women and the coins that Barbara has talked about. Before I talk about the coins, I want to talk about Barbara Lee. Yes. There's some things I need to tell you about Barbara Lee. <laughs> you may not know this, but Barbara is one of the most powerful people in Congress, women or men, yes. one of the most powerful. She's the chair on the Appropriations Committee of the something called State Foreign Operations Subcommittee, which means that she is in charge of all of our foreign cooperation assistance and the, and the rest. Values-based, mm -hmm. pragmatic, and concerned about the alleviation of poverty, the eradication of disease, and how we work together with other countries. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, at this time, when we are dealing with what's happening in Ukraine, and we're so proud of the courage of the people of Ukraine, Barbara Lee is the person that, to watch. Mm -hmm. Because again, when the president says we're giving a billion dollars here, or $13.6 billion, it's Barbara Lee's subcommittee, mm -hmm. which she chairs, that makes that happen. champion, a grassroots advocate, a champion here, there, and there, but power. Now we're talking power. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were together, we visited uh, uh, the Munich, uh, there's something called the Munich Security Conference, which is the big deal. We're all, uh, of course, the Chancellor of Germany, the Prime Minister of UK, pre heads of state of all of these countries come together. But because of COVID, narrow, not as many people as before, so more intensely powerful, you should have seen uh, the uh, interest they had in Congress, Madam Chair Barbara Lee, because of her important role in all of this. And when she speaks, people not only listen, they learn. And so, again, we should take, I mean, I don't know how many of people in our communities know uh, of the power that she has and the value, well, you know the values that she brings to it. So I just wanted you to know, as we're honoring these first, first woman in space, first woman uh, uh, what school superintendent, first head of a Cherokee Nation, all of that, uh, that Barbara mm -hmm. Lee is just a complete, total champion in the Congress of the United States on everything that we care about, what we stand for, values-based, idealistic, but also pragmatic in getting the job done. Persistent, persistent, persistent mm -hmm. Congressman. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, <laughs> by the way. When you get to be a chair of a subcommittee of appropriations, you get the, we refer to them as the cardinals. She's a cardinal. <laughs> we have to kiss her ring. <laughs> <laughs> Money, power, Barbara Lee. <laughs> so she had this idea, this idea of women on the coins. She talked about it. Uh, Rosie has been a champion in all of this as well. Uh, 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 Rosie, she was the, the treasure of the United States, and then bringing that experience uh, to this challenge. Thank you, Rosie. Thank you so much. Thank you. So don't we take, Mr. Mayor, you understand when I say, being a library commissioner, how, how um, important that was. You know, I said, I'm a volunteer. I'm going, I just want to tell you my own story. I'm a volunteer, Mr. Mayor. It was Mayor Alioto a long time ago. <laughs> I'm getting my kids for a little, little, and we were always volunteering at the library. I said, you don't have to give me the honor because I, I, I'm going to volunteer anyway. It's not going to make any difference in what I do. And he said, what I want to tell you is when you have official recognition of what you do, take it, <laughs> especially as a woman. Did you believe Joe Leono as a feminist all those years ago? I, I mean, it's amazing. But I say that to all of you as well, to the women here. Be recognized for what you do. And again, I'm, of course, Malia is so wonderful. We're so, so very, very proud of you, and I'm honored to be here with Stephanie Floyd Johnson, 
please accept condolences, the loss of your uh, dear husband, and uh, as I said, Rosie Rios, our dear mayor, where Willie Brown, and Willie Brown doesn't come and speak for anybody else except <laughs> Willie Brown. So <laughs> I don't care what he says, he's here for Willie Brown. <laughs> Amos, thank you. Latifa, I'm, I'm so happy you're in the position that you are in. You know what I mean. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you. And Yoshida, you make us so proud. Yoshida Mongozi. Is that, did I say it correctly? Yeshida Mongozi. Yeshida. Oh, I said Yoshida. I'm combining the two of you. I know you're Yeshida Mongozi. Thank you. And next time we want to hear your, your poem of the same name, of the same name. But let's uh, just talk about Maya Angelou for a moment. Do you know that she worked on the cable cars in San Francisco? How much more San Francisco can you be <laughs> than that? <laughs> and of course, it, at 15, she set her sights on working as a conductor aboard our city's iconic streetcars, well, like cable cars, a role dominated by white men at the time, you can imagine. Unfazed, she applied for the job every day until she got the job. Uh, the ten, uh, and of course, the tenacity of her writing. It's no need for me to even go into that. We all carry her words in our hearts. And one thing that she said that is so iconic and so that people quote all the time, they quote it all the time, and they say, Maya Angelou once counseled, people will forget what you said, people will never forget. People will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. You all know that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And for this and so many other reasons, we're so honored that she is the first to be on a coin. Mm -hmm. And yes, we will get uh, we will get Harriet Tubman on that twenty dollar twenty dollar <laughs> bill. That's for sure. Yeah. We uh, pay homage to these women who were the first in their field, and we're thrilled about having the first African American woman. Uh, 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 and and this just this as a little point. She mentioned in her comments that her birthday was the same day as Constance, Constance Baker, Baker, Baker Motley. Motley, same day, not same year, but same date. Yeah. But that, uh, that, that, that woman was, a, a Constance was appointed in 1966, right. right, just right after the passage of the Voting Rights Act mm. by Lyndon Baines Johnson, who had signed the, that legislation. How fortunate for us uh, that this justice comes in at a time when we really need her there on the court mm -hmm. as our voting rights are under assault mm -hmm. in our country. Mm -hmm. So, so many reasons for us to be together, for us to celebrate, for us to co collaborate, for us to recognize the challenges ahead, but take pride in those who went before. Mm -hmm. And in that vein, uh, it is my pleasure to yield back. We might yield it back to Latifa. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it for Latifa again. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara Lee, for bringing us together to celebrate women. As we undo ourselves from COVID, the, I just want to hug these women, like deep, deep hugs, like cuddle. Um, you know what's so amazing is, is the young people who go to school across the street at Kip, which used to be Benjamin Franklin, those who know this neighborhood know that. Do you realize that they, will, they, they have never known a day mm. where the Speaker of the House wasn't Nancy Pelosi? Yeah. <laughs> Do you understand that they have never known a day when they were babies, Malia Cohen mm -hmm. was on the Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. Just a few years ago, was the President of the Board of Supervisors. Young people like me, I think I'm still young, <laughs> don't know a day when we didn't have a mayor who was a black man mm -hmm. from Jim Crow South, mm -hmm. who made decisions that none of us understood at the time. I remember having to go to the War Memorial Building to protest, and we didn't know what you were doing at City Hall, but you had a vision, <laughs> and you knew that young people like me, young people from Hunter's Point, mm -hmm. young people from Sunnydale, young folks from Chinatown, deserve to walk into mm -hmm. 
a hall mm -hmm. that was representative of their parents' blood, sweat, and tears. Mm -hmm. We think about the sacrifices and the vision of Mayor Willie Brown. Now, I've read all three biographies, <laughs> and we know, we know that Barbara Lee, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, let me put some respect on your name, <laughs> Speaker Pelosi, and Willie Brown, we know nothing was given to them. They worked and they had vision from their ancestors and refused, mm -hmm. refused to let folks determine the future for their children and for their communities. They stepped up. Mayor Willie Brown, we're so happy to have you here today. Yeah. 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 Thank you. <laughs> Very much. I am, uh, of course, uh, delighted. Um, the members of Congress and Speaker Barbara Lee, two of you, Rosa Rios, when you put together the idea of doing the symbol of women on the methods of buying and selling and paying for things in this country, <laughs> It was such a great idea. And when you said you wanted to do Maya Angelou somewhere in the Bay Area, mm -hmm. and in particular, I called Amos. Mm -hmm. I said, Amos, you've been around long, almost as long as I have. Uh, you, you have any idea where yeah. Maya lived? And he said, well, we're going to find out. And we went to work. We found out. Not only did she do the cable cars, you didn't mention, somebody mentioned that she worked in one of the clubs here. Oh, and I was surprised that a preacher would know that. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> but when I conspired with Amos <laughs> and, and, and Barbara... He said, uh, go out uh, and, and, and uh, check to see exactly where we can do this. And we came with the wholesomeness of this library that uh, the library commissions had been so nice uh, to put in place. We um, recommended, and Barbara Lee said, uh, okay, you can try that, but that's Nancy's jurisdiction. You got to talk to Nancy. No, 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 Barbara, you got to talk to Nancy. <laughs> Nancy had given up on me. Uh, I, so I said, but I'll become your staffer. I will go out and talk to the people at the library. And I did. I did. And, and the whole thing unfolded in the most incredible, joyful manner. I even got a, a, a bottle of very expensive wine out of Barbara Lee. And I didn't know that's how she compensated her staff. Uh, but apparently that's part of the deal. Uh, because I became Barbara Lee's on the ground first staff person of doing what needed to be done, talking to the library and making sure that things went uh, as best they could. And she got mad at me because, uh, you know, I don't, uh, I, uh, I don't understand these instruments you people call telephones. Mm -hmm. So I don't always get your call, Malia. <laughs> you call me more often than anybody I know. Uh, but Barbara, I really thank all of you for allowing me on this day when women are being honored. Uh, and when I spoke, and can you imagine calling me from Brussels? Hey, Willie Brown, this is London. What you want, calling me from Brussels? <laughs> I want to make sure you know what your job is. Uh, and if I'm not there and they need somebody to say hello on behalf of the city, mm. you do that. Mama. So make sure all of you t tell her that I said hello from London Breed. <laughs> We don't have church, and I think that that's what we're doing. You all know that I, I have bad eyes, but there are folks from the Library Commission, and I'm going to attempt to read your names. Folks from the Library Commission, can you please stand? There's a number of you here, and I'm going to attempt. There's Commissioner Blonder. 
Commissioner Ono, Commissioner. Commissioner Connie, where are you? There you are. Commissioner Susan Mao, Commissioner Urena Lopez, Commissioner Pete Wong, and Commissioner Brianna, where are you? There you are. Thank you for being here. We also have the legendary Bevin Dufty is in the house, who's so amazing and has been such a good friend to so many of us. We love you, Bevin. And Program Director from CalPEP, Roger Jackson, you are here as well. If we've forgotten your name, know that your service is so amazing and we're here. We're here together to celebrate the amazing Maya Angelou. We're going to speed the program along a bit, but one of the reasons that we are here is to honor your mother-in-law and through her, again, honoring your husband. Congresswoman Barbara Lee is going to give a, a minute for us to do that, but I want you to know as someone who also lost my husband. We carry with us that legacy. And Guy, reading about and learning about Guy as a young kid at Washington High School and reading about Cageburg and reading about that wonderful woman who raised him. When I was a young mom, a teen mom, knowing what Miss Maya did with that young man gave so many of us, not just me, the strength and determination to be good to be good to our children, to raise an amazing child. Maya did that for so many of us. And we thank you and we honor you for being here. And we celebrate Guy, but we celebrate you as living legacy to all that he represents and all that he did. Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Thank you very much. Now, I just, um, once again, just would ask everyone, uh, to, to bow your heads just for a moment of silence and, and acknowledge and think about Guy and Dr. Angelo and Stephanie and the entire family and uh, in the context of what we're doing today because their spirits, Dr. Angelo and Guy Johnson, their spirits are with us and I'd just like for us to take a moment to think about them. Thank you very much. May their spirits live. Stephanie, why don't you come up now and give us a few remarks. And once again, thank you so much for being with us today. Um, we acknowledge your life, your presence, uh, and we know you. And we're glad to see you today. Thank you, thank you again. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Congresswoman Lee, House Speaker Pelosi, Treasurer 43rd, Treasurer of the United States, Rosie Rios, and my former boss, actually. I'm really very pleased to be here today. This is a day to rejoice. The family of Dr. Maya Angelou is honored that she is included in this historic project of redesigning the quarter to recognize the advances and contributions women have made to this country. It is important to know, and you're, you're hearing many of us saying the same things, but this is really critical. This is one of five coins that's going to be minted. Wilma, and to say these ladies' names, because we need to know their stories, as Speaker Pelosi and as Congresswoman Lee have said. Wilma Mankiller, Nina Ontario Warren, Annie Mae Wong and Sally Ride will be the faces on this new series of coins. Read about these women in this building and in all the libraries in this city and in the state of California and the country. Read about these women and understand they are a small representation of the courageous individuals that envisioned, fought, and sacrificed for a more perfect union. In his last public interview, my husband, Guy, Guy Johnson, said, this series of quarters is a wonderful beginning, and there is still much work to do. 
We must lift up and recognize the contributions of all the women and men that believed in the promises made by this country. I want to just share with you a couple of stories. Uh, Mayor Brown, I met my husband 30 years ago. We've been married for 28. And when I first met Guy, I thought he was the funniest man I'd ever met. <laughs> then I happened to have, his mom came to town, and we happened to um, come to the De Young Museum to see the exhibit of Henry Asaba Tanner. And Guy asked me to join him, him on this trip with his mother because he knew she was going to wind up in the museum store shopping, and he didn't really want to get involved in shopping. So mom, we arrived at the museum, we started walking, he's looking at the, at the beautiful uh, paintings, and mom said, you guys go ahead, I'm going to look at this on my own. We spent a two hours in the museum, it was absolutely amazing, it was a wonderful afternoon. We got back in the car and headed back over to Berkeley and Actually, the sun was setting and we went to Skate's restaurant in Berkeley. <laughs> and it was shortly after that that my mother-in-law met my mother and she asked him, my mother, do you know, do you think they know? Do you think they know that they're in love? <laughs> my mother-in-law would tell this story and when we rode back, I would sit in the back. No, she actually decided she'd sit in the back seat of the van and I sat in the front. And she said, Guy would say something, and then I would laugh. <laughs> He'd say something, and I would go. <laughs> so my mother-in-law called it, truly, well before Guy and I knew that we were falling in love. And we spent 28 years. We were, this would be the 28th year of our uh, marriage. Um, and just amazing experiences with both my mother-in-law and my husband. I will say this. Guy Johnson was a fighter. He did some golden, glow, gold, golden glove thing in New York, he would tell me about. But the truth is, he was a fighter. He fought every day of his life. He said he went to 16 schools. And if you know, every time you go to a school and you're the new kid, you're bullied. Not Guy Johnson. He said he would love it if his mom would go to Sears and get a sweater and shit in a you know, sweater ensemble and wear that, but she wore ethnic clothes, wore her hair natural. And he would fight. They'd say, your mama's from lost Africa. And he would fight. But the fighting in him served him well because he fought up until his last day. He fought. And I'm so proud of who he was. And I know how he was shaped. His mom never hit him or spanked him. She talked to him. She said, he said, sometimes I'd rather have the spanking because it would be over. <laughs> but two hours of why you did this. <laughs> and do you really, and what does that say about the person you are? I mean, she truly instilled in him thinking. He thought, and he could not say, I don't know. That's six hours. <laughs> or, you know, it's a continuation multiple days. It was a wonderful life with him. It was a wonderful experience sharing, um, meeting my mother-in-law in various parts of the country to be a part of ceremonies that were honoring her. Those were amazing memories and times. Um, I noticed on the poster here for this event, this excerpt from her poem, Still I Rise. So I just wanted to read that. Didn't know it was gonna be on the poster, but it's worth reading again. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Hmm. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bring the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. And we all rise. 
Thank you, ladies. You're fierce fighters too. You have to be, all of you. This was not a cakewalk, getting this project done. And truly, we have so much work to do, but this is a phenomenal beginning. Thank you. A standing ovation is extremely worthy. Many of us who went to Booker T. Washington had to memorize that poem uh, year after year after year. It's so beautiful to be here. I want to let you all know um, we're almost at the end of our program, but we, we have some amazing folks who are here to celebrate with us. Next, we'll have the, I want to get it right, the American Women's Quartet rollout. And then Congresswoman Barbara Lee will give us some closing remarks. She'll come r right up after the quartet. And... I hear we have Glide in the house. Is Glide here? Yeah. Our space of grace and comfort. Um, and then we're going to do a coin distribution, so you won't see me too much. Again, the quartet, please come up. Rosie, Rosie's next. Let me step aside. It's Rosie is next. Okay, Rosie is next, and we're so happy to have her. And then we'll have the quartet. Please, Rosie. Good morning, and thank you, Speaker Pelosi, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, Stephanie, my, my, we've known each other for over 20 years now, Mayor Willie Brown, so many others, my, my family members, etc. Such an honor to be here, and quite frankly, uh, I always knew this day was going to happen. No matter what people say, I always knew this was going to happen. Uh, this is a historic day, not just for San Francisco, uh, for, for our country and the entire world as a model of democracy. When I first initiated the efforts to redesign our nation's currency, this was back in 2008. And it, it, uh, it dawned on me that in the history of our Federal Reserve notes, we've never had the portrait of a woman. And I knew it would spark a conversation that perhaps we've never had in this country of what it means to have 51% of your population recognized and institutionalized on our currency and coins. Unfortunately, something we still kind of exaggerating, but not really, share with Saudi Arabia in terms of the developed nations having women on the modern day currency. So in 2016, it took me a long time, uh, but following our announcement to place Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill, I immediately put forth a proposal to redesign our quarters to honor historical American women. It was a struggle even then, but it wasn't until I found a champion in Congresswoman Barbara Lee that my dream would become a reality. And I can't think of anyone more deserving than Maya Angelou. Mm -hmm. I know why the cage bird sings is the anthem for many of us who have had to learn to find our own voice. You may know that the Circulating Collectible Coin Redesign Act of 2020 will honor five women per year for four years, as was already mentioned, but it also will include a few other items, including uh, in 2026, five quarters will be redesigned to honor our semi-quincentennial celebration. So the 250th anniversary of our nation's founding in less than five years will also include these quarters. It also includes four years of five quarters annually to honor American youth sports, something near and dear to my heart. And finally, it will give the authority to the Mint to design and strike the Olympic medals, which we all know is going to happen in L.A. in 2028. So the legacy of this legislation, which we all went through all these amendments for so many years, this will live on for decades to come. But today, we are honoring Maya Angelou and the people who have been inspired by her story. And Maya would be so proud of all our stories and our own heroes, including my own. I was born and raised as one of nine children to a single mother, Guadalupe Rios, just 30 miles southeast of here in Hayward, California. She immigrated from Mexico and fled an abusive relationship, but did what she took, uh, everything that it took, to send all nine of us to college. I worked for four years full time for the Alameda County Library Services headquarters. So libraries are near and dear to my heart. That full time job in high school is no doubt what got me into Harvard. So the thought that my mom did everything that she did 
It means everything to me. And she is one of two heroes. My second one is here today. Oh gosh, I promised I wouldn't do this. <clears throat> my daughter, Brooke. She graduated six months early from UC Davis, hardly 21 years old. <laughs> and was accepted into her first choice graduate program to pursue her doctorate in psychology this fall. She was with me August 26th, 2020, the day of the suffrage centennial, when we were seated next to Secretary Clinton at the unveiling of the first ever female statue in Central Park. And I will make sure that she continues to be part of this journey with me every step of the way, because this is about building future leaders, about seeing themselves by honoring those who came before them. These are their inspirations for their aspirations so they can reach their full potential and be active participants in every aspect of our social, political, and economic structures, in our history books, in the boardroom, in the C-suite, in Congress, in the White House, and in the Supreme Court. Woo! I would like to thank you, Speaker Pelosi, for making this event in our, back, in our backyard a priority for all the world to see. You have been my role model for decades, and we need you now more than ever. <laughs> to you, Mayor Brown, who has supported every crazy idea that I've ever had. It was actually at my swearing-in ceremony in 2009 as Treasury of the United States and my award ceremony in 2016. And to you, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, for believing in my vision and making history together. That was real courage. And I and all the future leaders in our young girls and boys mm -hmm. are forever indebted to you. I promise all of you that Maya Angelou and all the women we honor in our lives will no longer be buried treasure. This is just the beginning. So I need to, because I know I'll get a call from my mentor, Mayor Brown, and uh, Speaker Pelosi, and Barbara Lee tonight. Congresswoman Barbara Lee will correct me. Treasure Rios. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We don't call our leaders by their first names. We give them respect. Mm -hmm. We love you and you are a first. But because of your work, we know that you will not be the last. Give her some Well, I want to just first thank everyone for really uh, being here at this very um, uplifting event. Mm -hmm. You know, so much is going on in the world that uh, keeps us really in a lot of pain right now. Mm -hmm. And so to take a moment to be here with you has uplifted our spirits. I know uh, our speaker, I know Stephanie, I know Rosie, I know all of you feel like this moment will keep us going for the fight that we have to fight. Uh, I know the speaker's gonna come up in just a minute, but I always wanna say one thing about our new Supreme Court Justice, and as I look at Malia Cohen, I'm thinking about her authenticity and how she talked about raising her children, the balancing act, and your beautiful daughter, and what you're doing with your daughter really is an inspiration for all of us and how we can raise our family, we do the work, we fight the good fight, and we're persistent, we persevere, and we win. And so thank you, Malia, so much for showing us here in the Bay Area how to do all this. Mr. Pelosi. Let me, let me acknowledge our staff, Dan, Demisha, Samira, Alex, our, all of our staff, Julie and her absence, all of you for really pulling this together and taking so much time and really making this a, a community event that we all are so happy and pleased about. Thank you all again. Thank you, Barbara. I want to acknowledge Adriana and Dan and others as well. The staff always make so many things happen that look so easy, but so much goes into it. I just had a couple of thoughts I wanted to share with you. When we're talking about women first in their field being on these coins, and this is remarkable, understand that Rosie Rios' name was on the dot, signature was on that.
that is pretty significant. And in Washington, D.C., when we launched the coins, when Barbara had the event to launch the coins, it was pretty spectacular. Um, Maxine Waters, whose committee this all goes through, was part of this as well. And it was fabulous. It was wonderful. But nothing could compare to having you here to tell this, your personal story. Was that remarkable to see Stephanie Floyd Johnson tell the story of being the girlfriend, the fiance, the daughter-in-law, <laughs> and that beautiful story. We feel very honored and again, extend sorrow to you, sympathy to you. But there's one thing you have to know, because we're talking about first, first on the coin, first in this, first in that. Barbara Lee, was it in a couple of weeks, Barbara? The UN? Uh, Tuesday. Oh, on Tuesday. You come here, Barbara, you tell me. <laughs> on Tuesday. <laughs> On Tuesday, she will be the first woman member of Congress, first African-American woman member of Congress. Well, take off any one of them, first woman, first African-American, uh, to address the United Nations. Tell them why. Why is because the speaker has had her confidence and trust in me to represent the Democratic Caucus at the United Nations on the critical issues that our planet faces. So I was invited by um, the State Department to speak to the General Assembly of the United Nations commemorating the end of slavery and the transatlantic slave trade and what that means now as we move forward to end this institutional racism and all of the unjust policies and practices that still exist around the world. So. The United Nations General Assembly, for Speaker Pelosi, thank you for the honor to be able to represent our, our, not only our Democratic Caucus, but the Congress, which means the people of our country. So thank you guys for being here. So we're going to have Glide Memorial? Yeah, so I think we, have the, we do have Glide Memorial here, and we are, we are about to wrap up. But it's really important to recognize the women who run this library. Yeah. Yeah. And it's really important to know that the, the, the babies and the elderly, the students who come here every single day, uh, Naima Dean and Michelle yeah. Jeffries, where are you? Thank you for providing haven and safe space to the young people of the Fillmore. We love you and for letting us do this here today. We know it takes so much to run this house and we really deeply want to thank you. Now it's Glide. And as you, as you leave today, as we listen to the beautiful songs of Glide and y'all begin to come up and ascend on this stage, we want to thank our elected representatives. We want to love on them. We want to make sure that we are praying for them. We want to make sure that we're clear that as we look at this coin, as you all leave out, that it signifies a great woman of San Francisco who led us in so many ways in culture and spirit and in moral clarity. Glide, please come. And thank you, Congresswoman Barbara Lee and Speaker Pelosi, and Treasurer Rios, and Ms. Johnson. Mm -hmm. We are so thankful. Greetings. On behalf of Cecil Williams, Reverend Cecil Williams, and the late Janice Maricatani, we are here to represent the Church of Unconditional Love, and we just love that Maya is being celebrated here. I remember when she would come to the church and said, this is home, and um, we just want to take this song that we're going to sing right now to out to you because it's been our solace for the last two years. It's called Encourage My Soul. And the story of this song ends in the joyous rejuvenation of love and compassion and peace. So without further ado, these are members of the Glide Ensemble. My name is Vernon Bush, and I'm the uh, director. And uh, we're going to sing Encourage My Soul.
we rise, have a wonderful day, and leave safely. Thank you so much. Let me just take a minute to thank our, our artists, our musicians, our, our singers for that wonderful, wonderful lifting of our spirits today. Thank you. And speak to Milwaukee, I just have a, I just thought of this. I used to live at 250 Page Street and at the Iqua Towers for several years, so I feel like, you know, the connection spiritually and emotionally, and my heart uh, still is with San Francisco, as well as now my beautiful congressional district. So thank you to all my constituents who came over.